A few weeks ago, I announced that I was going to start a new web design business and I'm documenting the whole journey. So the last few weeks, I wanted to make some progress with this business and then I started working on the branding, the visual identity. But then I ran into a dilemma, which was, should I start this new agency under my personal name or an agency name? So come up with a new name. And I needed this answer because I was working on the branding and I need to know, do I need to make a new logo, a new domain, uh, or email, everything. So the first thing I did was ask my community for help. The results were that the majority of people, like 60%, thought that doing client work under a separate business name was the best. So I asked them for some arguments. This person said that it's a lot better to make an agency name because then you can sell it in the future. This person said, be real and be yourself. And this person said, two things were clear to me in your first video. You want to create a strong brand, a company of one. And who is that one? You, Reno. So yeah, I have two camps of opinions, not a clear winner yet. So I started looking online for some other YouTubers. The first one that I found is from Ren, another fellow uh, design YouTuber. Let's see what he has to say about it. It really depends on number one, your ambitions. If your ambition is to start a big agency and hire a lot of people and grow and scale and stuff like that, an agency might be the right thing for you. But if you're looking to build a single person business, small business and work on your own, then maybe an, a freelancer name works right for you. And I wanna tell you that some people think that uh, maybe clients do not treat freelancers who use their name, you know, uh, seriously enough. But I've always used my personal name and not an agency name. And my experience has been that there's a lot of clients who actually do not want to work with agencies. They want to work with freelancers because they have the assumption, which is a lot of time correct, that agencies are more expensive. There's more people. It's going to be slower. It's going to be more bureaucratic. Mm -hmm. You're not going to work with the creator itself. So there's people who actually want to work with freelancers. On the other hand, there's big clients or corporates who do feel more security working with an agency. So it really depends on your ambition and what kind of clients you want to work with. Thank you, Ren. This was very interesting. He doesn't have a clear answer, but I think he leans more towards the personal side because he says that many companies want to work with one person instead of this big agency. I know that many people uh, that are also struggling with this, they say like, yeah, but with an agency, you look bigger, you look more professional. But this is interesting. He says from his experience, not all the clients want that. They want to work with one person so that they know that communication is faster. They know where the money is going. Very interesting. I also found this guy, a professional photographer. Let's see what he has to say. If you want to be a professional photographer, you trade under your name and your name alone. There is no, yeah, but I want something cool and creative. No, nobody wants your cool and creative name. They want your name as the creative. When you're getting booked as a commercial photographer, you're getting booked because it's you. Okay, I'm not a photographer, but I do think he has a point here where he says, when the client approaches you, they want to work with you because they like your style. Maybe it's your design style or your style of communication or even your personality. I know that this is true because I also have a friend who does photography and videography. And he says the same thing about clients that they really care about the person who's actually doing it instead of the product that they deliver. So when I saw this, I was leaning a lot towards the uh, personal name side. But then I did some more research because under my last video, you guys were also recommending some books and especially two books that caught my attention. A few of you actually recommended this book, uh, The E-Myth, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. And this one, The Million Dollar Web Designer Guide. Well, if that's not for me, then I don't know what is, right? So I started reading these books. These books basically explain the problem that most creative businesses run into. And that is that if you keep your business small, just one person, you, then a lot of the pressure is on you. So when the business starts to grow, chaos occurs. The e book even says, if your business depends on you, you don't have a business, you have a job. Which sounds very convincing if you don't think about it too deeply. 
So the general idea of these books is that instead of you trying to do all the work yourself, you build systems. So you document how you do it. Then you teach that to other people, which then become your employees or your contractors. And then they can deliver the service for you without you being involved basically letting the agency run on its own. This gives you the founder a lot more freedom to do something else and it can create a lot more money because you can scale. With systems, you can scale. Without systems, it's impossible to scale. This sounds very appealing, right? Because you get more money and more freedom. I mean, who doesn't want that? That's why many young dudes fall for this approach, including me in the past, because I thought it would give me freedom. But is it really so simple? And is this solution for everyone? Or is there more to it? I personally think that there's a lot more to it because there's a big price you pay for that, which these books don't talk about. The first price you pay is a lot of responsibility because do you really think your agency can just run on its own? Have you ever had employees by yourself? I mean, some of you have, some of you haven't. But let me tell you, you first have to find a person that's not easy already. Then you have to teach them the material. So you have to have good teaching material. And that is assuming that you can actually teach because that's a skill. But then do you really think that that will just go right all the time? No, you have to check up on them. They will have questions. You have to answer that. You will have to manage them. You will have to give them feedback if they're underperforming. You have to pay them. So you basically become a manager, which is a lot of responsibility. And then the second price you pay is that you lose the connection with the work you actually wanted to do from the beginning. I mean, if you're managing all the time, because that costs time, trust me, it does cost time to manage people. So if all of your time goes to that and maybe doing some sales, then are you still doing the design and the development that you enjoyed? I mean, if you don't enjoy it, then it's a good option. But I personally enjoy the design and the development. So it's kind of ironic because this book promises that you will become a million dollar web designer. But if you follow all of the steps of this book, then you're not a web designer anymore. You're a manager. So that's what I mean with the price you pay. So these two books basically assumes that the founder doesn't want to do the actual creative work himself anymore. But I know how it works because I have some friends with agencies. Some of them, they love it that they can manage people and they don't have to do the actual design work anymore. But some of them secretly want to do some design themselves. And then sometimes they just do it in their free time, which then kind of defeats the purpose because you went into this career to do design and then you do it on the side. It doesn't make any sense. And also that profit thing, you think it's so easy to make a lot of profit with that approach. I've heard stories where small agencies are having 100k of revenue and then only 10k of profit because they have all these costs because they need to pay all of these people. It creates a lot of overhead. It's not just the salaries, it's also the systems. You have, you have to buy bigger packages for project management, for invoicing, everything. And so your profit margins go down when you do that approach. So I'm just gonna say it. I think the writer of the e-myth was wrong. Because being a company of one doesn't mean that you are doomed to be a freelancer and have to just do whatever your client wants. That is having a job if you have to follow orders. If you're on your own, you can still act like a business if you systemize what you offer. It's all about positioning yourself, creating those systems, and then filtering clients that do not fit your agenda. So that's why his quote, in my opinion, is way too dramatic and way too black and white. The definition of a business that I found on Google was an organization that provides goods and services to the community in exchange for money with the goal of becoming profitable. Yeah, you can do that on your own. So even though I find it interesting to critique these books, I do have to say that this approach is a valid approach. You can build a team, build systems, and then try to skill that way. Okay, so now back to the point. We need to get to a conclusion, okay? So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find an approach that works for me. I'm not trying to find the best approach that works for everyone, right? One answer for everyone, that doesn't work. That gets clicks on YouTube and TikTok and wherever but it's not reality. And I think I spent way too many years trying to find the perfect solution, but 
you never find it. At some point, you just have to say to yourself, okay, what do I really want? So let me share that with you because maybe you can resonate. I already said a little bit of it, but I like to do the creative work myself. I love it. I also don't like the process of hiring, firing even worse, and doing performance uh, conversations. Those are not fun, even though you have to do it as a boss. I only want to work one day a week on this business, which I think doesn't really fit the agency model because with the agency model, it kind of looks bigger and it looks like it's always available. So I shouldn't look too big and too available. And I think when you do it in a personal way, it, I think clients can be more understandable, especially with me because they see I have a YouTube channel. I have other things going on. So I think that works better for me. I don't want to do a lot of preparation work before I can get started with this agency. And creating a separate name, separate logo, domain, everything is just more work. And then what about selling the agency in the future? Because that is a really good argument, right? But in my position, it's kind of hard because even if I would create a separate agency name, then it would still be quite dependent on me, my personal brand, because my personal brand brings in quite a bit of clients. And so even if it's a separate name and I am gonna stop with the agency, then it will also damage the lead inflow. So that makes it less interesting to actually buy my business in the future. So as you can see, I basically came to the conclusion for me that creating an agency name is not the best option for me and I'm just gonna do it under my personal name. I do wanna keep it a little bit separate. So I think I'm gonna use a subdomain, uh, something like uh, agency.mywebsite.com uh, where I can put my services and list it out a little bit more specifically because my personal website should also link to my educational stuff and everything I do. I want it to be a little bit more than that so I think I'm gonna use a subdomain so my approach is basically a one-man agency it's not a freelancer approach where I'm just available for every project no I have my focus I know what I want to do and I do it in a specific way but it's a one-man show and let's say that I don't like this approach I can always change it in the future and I can always start an agency a separate name if I want to and I can still hire people with this approach as well it doesn't stop me from hiring an extra designer or developer to help me with a project, but if I can do it myself, I would do it because I enjoy it. So what is your approach? Did you choose something that you're happy with or are you still questioning what you wanna do? I wanna give you a few questions. If you're still questioning what your approach should be, then I have some questions for you. The first one is, do you want to outsource the creative work or do you like to do it yourself? Do you think you will like to manage people? Are you dreaming of making it big one day by selling your company? Do you already have a job and want to do projects on the side? Then it might be better to not make the impression that it looks too big by starting an agency. And I know that agencies are very sensitive to employees starting another agency, which makes sense of course. So yeah, that's it. I also wanted to give you something that you can think about. I am slowly building my agency step by step and I'm documenting everything. I want to keep things simple. I hope you like it so far and hopefully I will see you in another video.